Cool. So let's get started. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today with this topic. First, a little explanation on the title. Data visualization tools have been evolving over the years. And today, I'm going to introduce the evolving history with the features Apache eTrust gradually adds. And hopefully, through this very specific tool, I wish to give you some insights on why and how these changes happen for general database products and how it has shaped the modern visualization tools we see today. On the other hand, recently, we have added a few new features to Apache eCharts so that it is better at st telling stories behind the data and making it a great tool for storytelling. So I'm Wenli Zhang, and you may also call me Ovilia. I've joined the project for about five years ago, and I'm working full time on it now. I'm a member of Apache eTrust Incubating PPMC and also a committer. eTrust was originally a project inside our company, Baidu. Eight years ago, an engineer created a chart tool to solve the problems relating to his job. And after half year's improvement, he made this open source on GitHub under an organization of Baidu. In 2018, the project was donated to the ASF, and it has been under incubation since then. Now we are working on our next big release, eTrust v5, and discussing about graduation in our mailing list. First, let's ask why do we need a chart in the first place? Why it is not enough to show the data itself? Well, let's take this case for example. This is a survey about one's attitudes on violence against women. To be more specific, it asks whether you think it is justified beating wife when she does certain things. When you look at this table, you may find it hard to get the point of these figures at first sight. Well, unless you are math genius, apparently. But if we take a little visual hint, like using bars for data values, we can get the idea of this table much faster. The people with higher education tend to have less violent attitudes against women. We call these bar charts, but they are just a simple rectangles in essence, right? We all know that a picture is more than a thousand words. But how does this happen? Why do we understand pictures much better than words or numbers? Our ancestors spent millions of years surviving and evolving, where visual signals played a crucial role. According to revolutionary laws, those who don't understand pictures well were more likely to get killed or failed to find enough food. So it is harder for their DNA to pass along. On the other side, words and numbers were invented only a few thousand years ago. So our ability to understand words and numbers is much less developed than pictures, which gives you a good reason to use charts instead of raw data to convey messages to others. Charts at, at the early stage only had simple functions and, what, and were most likely to be static, without animation or interaction. Naive as it might be, it did complete the job to help people better understand obscure data. And next, I'm going to tell the story of how, step by step, this naive charts evolved into modern chart visualization tools. We have much more complex functions today. 
We see in previous examples that charts at this stage were quite simple and have only limited functions. Chart types were limited to most frequently used ones like bar charts, line charts, scatter charts, and pie charts. It had little interactions and served almost as an image. And it was hard to use chart tools at this stage to do things complex. Also, there were limited animations and not very good looking. So people at this stage realizes that it is useful to involve more animations and more chart types to make charts fancier. The ability to make complex animation is required in some cases to make charts to be more pleasing and interesting. E-Charts provides animation duration and delay for each data item. So it is flexible enough to create different animation effects for various situations. And all our attempts to make charts more pleasing are not just for aesthetical considerations. More importantly, a nicer looking chart may also provide a higher probability that users love your product and tend to use it more often. More chart types were supported at this stage. Take Apache eCharts, for example, we have radar charts, heat map charts, parallel charts, Sankey charts, and so on. In fact, Apache eCharts provides more than 20 built-in chart types, and there are community-made extensions to further increase this number. By providing a large number of chart types, it is more flexible for developers to make different charts for different data and scenarios. Besides, if you have very specific charts to make, eCharts also provide very flexible APIs for you to make charts like these. Another of our PBMC member, Shuang Su, shared a speech yesterday at the Apache Com, sharing about how Apache eCharts designed this flexible yet easy to use API for users to create customized charts. You can check out his slides for more information if you are interested. Furthermore, Apache eCharts has an extension based on WebGL to make 3D charts like 3D globes, parametric curves in the surfaces, city visualization, and so on. So at stage two, we did have more decorations like animations and more chart types to make charts look prettier. The reason why I am using the word decorations here is that sometimes these kind of improvements do not necessarily provide any extra information. For example, the left chart is a stacked bar series in a polar system, while the one on the right side is a more traditional bar series in the Cartesian system. By making the bar charts be in a polar system does not provide any extra information. So we say that they are visually equivalent. But in some cases, it does provide special flavors to the charts and thus makes it more engaging. Since the animations and the interactions were most for decoration, the ability to let users explore the data are still limited in stage two. And that is why we introduced more interactions at stage three to help users explore the data and better understand it. Benjamin Franklin had this famous saying that tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. By including interactive components in a chart provides a chance for the users to involve so that they can get a better understanding of your data. Let's take Legend, for example. 
At stage two, legends were usually static and just for indicating which color is for which series. But at stage three, it became interactive. A user may hover on a legend to switch on or off a series and see the comparison with other series. In HSV5, we also provide a way to highlight a certain series when hovering on one piece of the series data. Less is more. By downplaying other series, we make the one series stand out and see the data without distraction. Data zooming is also a great tool to explore the details of data. In this case, we have a million scatter points. We can first have an overall impression of the whole data shape and then zoom in to see the details of a certain part. Another thing worth mentioning is that Apache HR is providing progressive rendering so that it is able to render a million scatter points like this. If you are interested in this topic, you may find more information on my YouTube channel where I introduced how each has rendered tens of millions of data in real time. The link is included in the slides, which you may download after this talk. Another interesting interactive component each has provides is data brushing. In this example, you may brush select part of the data on the left side and the bar series will be updated on the current with the corresponding data on the right side. And you can even drag and selecting drag the selecting area to move around and see other parts of the data on the map and observe the changes on the right side. And what's and what's more exciting about this is that this brushing and connecting logic is very easy to implement if you are using Apache eChats because it does all the underlying work for you. We can see that at stage three, we already have quite complex abilities to make charts of different styles. Your imagination of what you want to make with these features is really the limitation of what you can create. So how can we even do better after this? Well, Apache each has answered this question with storytelling, to tell the story behind the data. With the upcoming each has V5, you can make this far raising effect to tell the story of how data changes over time. This is an example of average life expectancy of different countries and regions. Instead of using several static charts of varied years, this bar raising effect can make it easier for users to have instant impression on how data changes over time. We also plan to make a tool for users to make this kind of charts with GUI so that no coding is required. Similarly, eTrust V5 also comes with line raising effect, which also is used for showing the data changes over time, but gives extra information on the overall tendency. Another useful feature for storytelling is the morphing effect for custom series. As we introduced earlier, each has provide custom series to let users define how their special charts look like. And, what's make, and what makes it cooler here is that you can soon create morphing effects like this with each other's custom series and tell the story of how data in one chart type transform into another or the aggregation and composition of the data. What stage four differs from three is that it provides more complex methods to tell the story that cannot be done otherwise. By providing these methods, 
we wish to make it easier for users to tell the story behind data rather than just showing the data. It's not just for decoration, but by accentuating the impact of data, you can let people learn the story, feel the shock, and hopefully take actions to, for the change, for the better after seeing the charts you make. And that's what we wish to do with providing powerful yet easy to use storytelling functions at this stage. It may be hard to tell where the next stage goes with that of it. But as the saying goes, the best way to predict the future is by creating it. We are working continuously to make data viz tools easier to use while keeping its flexibility. And I believe data viz is playing a more and more important role in the future. So now is the best time to dive into Apache charts if you have not, and tell a story of your own. In conclusion, we introduced the history of how data viz tools evolved with the examples of eCharts and explained the motivation and considerations behind it. One thing we need to know about is that these stages does not take place linearly and may probably overlap each other with certain tools. And that, that is pretty much I'd like to share today. And I will take questions now, and you may send me an email if you prefer to. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. Do you have any questions? Or you may also send me an email for that. Yeah, these the, all the examples that I share in the slides are written in a charts in JavaScript and I record it with a video. And you can visit eCharts website to see more examples. I will send the links now. These are all the examples with eCharts. Yeah, I, I've also tried with Grafner eCharts. It's not very good to use, and I think more community help is required with that plugin so that you can bring more features from eCharts to Grafner. With Grafner eCharts, you may have to write a lot of code, but other Grafner components do not require so, and the job is mailing down in GUI. So maybe you can contribute to that project. So Eric's question, what inspired creating a new charting library? Um, back the year 2008, there are not, ve not very not many chart libraries that is um, flexible and functionary enough for the requirements we, we need to use in our work. So an engineer first created this library. And by comparing with other charting libraries, um, eCharts is open sourced and free to use and have so many chart types and uh, the big data rendering, all those features we provide, we hope to involve more people to get to use this, all great features that each house provides. How charts are connected with source data? You may, you may provide data in many forms. For example, you can write the data in JavaScript, like in arrays, which is 
the most simple ways, perhaps. And you may also use Ajax to load the data from your database or uh, other methods. That doesn't matter. As long as you get the data, you pass it to eCharts with JavaScript, you can use it with eCharts. So it does not necessarily matter what, what data source you are using. So about automatic data viz, I guess this means that you can set the parameters in GUIs like uh, how the colors of bar charts and um, they are how they maybe the stack bars or how they form. Actually, we have tried with one product with, which is very complex and we spent a lot of time and effort on it. And one problem with that is no matter how many parameters we provide, people will always need more for they want to configure all the options each has has. So maybe a better solution we provide here is that we hopefully we want users to see the examples, see all the examples that which is similar to what you want to create and you find a similar one and check out the options, the object and we wish to make it easy to for people who are not very good at JavaScript or other coding languages, you can also change the, the examples of others to create your own charts. This is, for now, the balanced solution for us. Thank you. And I can share my slides so that you can see more links from it. And thanks you for listening. Thank you. And if you have any problem using eChats, you can also send emails in our mailing list. The link is in the official website. Thank you, Justin.
Yes, there are extensions already supporting many chat libraries. I can just send the link to you. Not Google Maps, perhaps, but there are several chat map services like Mapbox, Leaflet, and ArcGIS. And you may also create one with Google Maps based on each other's APIs. So if you don't have any more questions, let's take this for our end. Thanks, thanks Justin, for, for that. Yeah, thank you, Justin. Bye-bye.